Welcome to the Humanized Podcast. This is all about personalizing your health. And I'm your guest host today, Dave Stouter. Now, we're going to be talking about constipation in children because this is a topic I don't think uh, I have a couple people come into Village Green and ask me about it, but I don't think I know enough about it. And we're going to be talking with Dr. Sheila Kilbane. Now, before I introduce her, I want you to know. I want to thank Village Green Apothecary for sponsoring this podcast. And I want you to know that you can go to myvillagegreen.com and all of these podcasts are free. You can watch the video. You can uh, listen just to the sound. We have transcripts and we have wonderful guests on. And so I encourage you to go do that. Now, um, uh, Sheila Kilbane is MD, board certified pediatrician who specializes in integrative medicine. And don't we need more of those folks? She uses the best of traditional and integrative medicine to find the root cause of illness. Using her seven-step process along with natural and nutritional therapies, Dr. Kilbane helps families significantly improve or resolve altogether illnesses such as colic, reflux, eczema, recurrent ear and sinus infections, asthma, allergies, and stomach and GI issues such as constipation and abdominal pain. She also conducts online education classes in addition to seeing individual patients in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Kilbane, welcome to the Human Eyes Podcast. Thank you, David. It's I love doing these. You, I love your team, and you all do an amazing job. So thank you for having me. Well, I, I've always enjoyed working at Village and Green, be, at Village Green, because they they're information rich, and and that's what we try to do here. Now it's interesting. Uh, we we just recently did a podcast with somebody on constipation, but we really centered on adults. And of course, at least adults, you can sort of you know it's easier to ask them questions; they understand something. But we have unique challenges with um with little ones with kids. So, um, you know, I, I see some of your information here and you start out with lack of direction. Uh, I, um, would it be fair to say that many times the sort of traditional medical model in dealing with ch- children's constipation leaves a lot to be desired? So constipation was one of those things that when I came out of residency, I was convincing parents to use Miralax, right, which is a laxative and that it was safe and we could use it for years, years on end. And once I started to get into studying integrative medicine and understanding nutrition and the gut microbiome, you, you kind of ask yourself, well, we don't have a Miralax deficiency, right? Why are we hmm. having to give a laxative to have a bowel movement every day, which is something we should be able to have. And then I started reading more about Miralax. And when you look at the actual instructions in it, it says, don't give to kids under 17 unless, you know, being advised by a doctor and don't take longer than a week. And I was like, wait a minute, this isn't what, you know, the way that I learned this medication. So, and again, it's still, if your child is on Miralax, don't just stop it. Don't just listen to what we're going to talk about. And then you can talk to your pediatrician about how are my child's bowels supposed to function? And right. And we're supposed to have a daily easy bowel movement. And it just doesn't, when we talk about lack of direction, I think a lot of times we don't know that the kids aren't having bowel movements because if they're a little bit older, right, they're not going to always talk about it or they might be a little shy about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I notice, I mean, uh, being a dad, like some kids, you can say, hey, you know, did, did you poop today? Yeah, dad, I sure did. And other kids are like, dad, leave me alone. You know, like, I, I don't want to talk about it. And obviously, if you're changing diapers, you you know. Um, so, it, well, one thing is, I'm sure you help parents. How do we, uh, if we have a sort of a, ch- a, a shy child that isn't going to say, hey, mom, I haven't gone to the bathroom in three or four days or whatever. How do we, how do we find out without, you know, sort of um, going past the boundaries that the child would like to have? Yeah. So the first thing is, right, what is constipation? And so it's fewer than three bowel movements in a week. And the stools will be hard and dry, right? And they might be painful. And sometimes what happens too is the kids aren't getting it all out, which is super uncomfortable. And 
So it's, and it can, it can mask as irritability. It might be belly pain. Their energy might seem low. They might have a really poor appetite. And so once we start getting things moving, that whole, everything is connected. So they may even have a better appetite. And what I would I have families do is get a little sticker chart, get something that will motivate the kids. And if they're old enough to go on their own, you have them check in every day and put a sticker on the chart if they've actually gone. And then you can write, we all have heard of the Bristol stool chart. And that shows you what a healthy stool looks like. So it goes everywhere from right hard pellets to, you know, a blob of liquid. What we want is kind of a sausage or a snake. And it really, and I will always remember this because I used to struggle with constipation and this, and I had been through all of my medical training, but it took me forever to have a bowel movement. And I was at a conference and on kids with autism. And it was, you know, they were talking about integrative and functional medicine. And one of the doctors said, it should only take you the same amount of time to have a bowel movement as it takes you to urinate. And I was like, "Ah, wait a minute, you know, hold the fort. What are you talking about? Because it would take me so long to go. And so if I didn't have that awareness for myself, how was I able to have this for my patients? So anyway, that was my, and that was when I took gluten out of my diet. And for me, that made a significant difference. For kids, what we start with is there there are a couple of things because it can take a while to make nutrition changes, right? So one of the first things that we want to do is add magnesium, right? If you asked your mother, your grandmother, what to do for constipation, you would say, get milk of magnesia. And that's a supplement you can get at most drugstores. We don't want you to use that because that's that we have much higher quality supplements now, but we would use a, a magnesium. We want a little bit of mag citrate, magnesium oxide can do that, but then you also want some chelated magnesiums in it so that you get some absorbed into your bloodstream. But for kids, like I have a free supplement guide and I've got the dosing based on weight, you know, and I have the good brands of supplements on there and you magnesium is the mineral that makes things relax. And it's always, we don't, I don't know why we're taught in medical school to reach for a laxative versus reaching for magnesium because magnesium is going to help It's part of the the magnesium that stays in your bowels is going to pull more water into your colon. And then it's going, we we get that systemic absorption because that's going to help your colon, your, the peristalsis of your GI tract, which is moving the food from your mouth out your bottom. And so we, we, that's the first thing that we do while we make these other changes. Does that does that make sense? It it makes a lot of sense. And, and first of all, uh, a few things. I really think that's great where if you involve your child, I love your chart idea because when it can be private, you know, you'd be in there and then put your little star on and at some appropriate time, you and mom or dad can go over it. And um, uh, I want to remind everyone, we will give out your website uh, before this is over so that people are hearing Bristol chart. I've never seen that. Or, uh, oh, I want to see those recommendations because, you know, people wonder about, potencies. But yeah, I was just taught um, the quote side effect of magnesium is loose stools. So if if you're very regular and take more magnesium than you need, you get loose stools. I know they give you large amounts for a colonoscopy to clean you out. But if you're constipated or tend to run slow. So I like that. So you want your child having at least three bowel movements and they should not be painful and they should not be real hard because if they're they're in there too long. And then um, now if you find out, and I, I also, I think you said a very interesting thing. Um, If you have a child that you see is irritable, is grumpy, doesn't eat, seems to have stomach pain, you know, you, it might be, I don't want to say as simple as, but it might just be constipation. And so like, are they having a hard time at school or their friends bothering them? So so where do we go? Let's let's talk about kids where we can talk to them, you know, that they can communicate with us a little bit. Um, so we don't want to do Miralax. I'm with you on that. So we start with some basic magnesium. But what else can we do to get our children regular? 
Yes. So as you know, dairy is, we, we push dairy on children because we've all been taught that we have to have dairy for healthy bones and all that kind of thing. But dairy in fact is inflaming. And if there, there are several studies done, I'll just go over one of them that took a group of kids and, you know, put them into two groups. And these kids were having ball movements. Some of them, you know, one every three days, some of them would go 15 days without a bowel movement. And so they took the, you know, the group that they were intervening with and they took them all off of dairy, right? The other group they left and the group that they took off of dairy, 65% of them within one week were, they were pooping daily and easily. And then they put the dairy back into the diet and within a week, those 65% of those kids were all constipated again. So that's a, a really good study, right? You take away something, you put it back in. So if your child loves dairy and they're drinking dairy, right? You get the magnesium started and then you can, you can get my book, you get on, you know, anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Target, wherever. And in my book, I, it's called Healthy Kids, Happy Moms, Seven Steps to Heal and Prevent Common Childhood Illnesses. And I walk you through exactly how to do this. And you, you, you gradually remove dairy from the diet so that we don't create, you know, huge stress at home. Sure. And then we also, I have you put the kids on a probiotic and a digestive enzyme. You know, and then later on, as you as you start to understand how the body functions, then you just you want to keep learning and learning. And that's where, you know, my my book just goes through all the science and I have lots of I have color visuals and it's it it helps to walk you through all this stuff because it I don't I never want it to feel overwhelming. Um and it's very doable. You know, one thing I've I've looked through your book and one thing I've noticed is that you don't just give your advice, but then you actually give the tips on how to put it into practice. Because a lot of times you can say, this is what your child needs to do. This is what you need to do for your child. It's not that easy. Get your child to eat more greens. Well, you know, that can be a big fight. And then you certainly don't want, you want to try to not have aggravation uh, around just getting your kids to eat well and feel good, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And it's because it's not, it's never just one intervention, right? It's, we need to add the magnesium. We need to add usually more fruits and vegetables, high fiber foods, such as seed, like chia seed, flaxseed, hemp seed are phenomenal. And while we're doing that, then we start removing the dairy. So it's, oh, you know, and then add in a probiotic and the digestive enzymes, but it's a, it's a multifaceted approach, but that's how you get the long lasting results is when you, you've got to figure out what is triggering this inflammation that my child's GI tract isn't doing this peristalsis, right? That contraction and relaxation that moves food from your mouth to your bottom. Um, in your experience, either just with your own clients or in reading, like what percentage roughly of kids, I'm just curious if you know, ha suffers from some kind of constipation? Oh, I mean, it can be up to 30% or more. Mm -hmm. um, it, it especially, it, and that stat goes even higher if you're just taking, you know, any point in time of some, you know, in the lifespan. I mean, most people will struggle with it. Like we always will put out information too, because when you're traveling, right, and you're, you're, what you're eating gets off and maybe you're not sleeping as good, a lot of people end up getting constipated when they're on vacation. And there's nothing more, there's nothing less fun than feeling uncomfortable and being constipated while you're traveling. And, and I, I would think, I wonder if we could ask uh, adults who are struggling with this. I bet, um, I mean, it can change. I know some medications, you know, painkillers, sometimes antidepressants can slow somebody down. So they may have had no problem as a child and developed it later. But I wonder if children uh, who don't resolve constipation problems just grow up and they don't go away. They just get worse. Yep. Yep. And then it, it, 
lead morphs into different issues because if you're not excreting your your right the the stool is all of the byproducts from your food that are not supposed to get absorbed into your bloodstream and if you you've got this stool just sitting in your colon those toxins are going to start to get absorbed back into your bloodstream and you you'll notice and kids are easier to notice this with but if they haven't had a bowel movement in two to three days you you may notice irritability mood swings trouble sleeping and it's just that you know one it's just they're uncomfortable and two it's that their body is not excreting these things that we're not supposed to be having circulating in our system yeah, and I mean, and and I, I wonder if people realize that it can affect you pretty quickly. You don't have to be constipated for forty years to say, "Oh, my colon is starting to make me toxic." It it it, yeah. it can happen pretty quick. I think. Yeah, and especially think the about things it. kids are eating. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it, it really um, and having. I mean, there is nothing better, right, than having a good daily bowel movement. It's just, it really, it's so good to feel good. And it's, I, I always, I, I think I was put on this planet to make sure kids all have a daily bowel movement because it's all the things that you even said before, right? You trouble focusing at school, um, irritability, you can't play. And when you get when you get this under control, it's all, it's going to decrease, help to decrease the child's systemic inflammation, which is also going to allow their immune system to work optimally. So constipation can also present in kids in a constellation of other illnesses like asthma, eczema, right? Recurrent ear and sinus infections, reflux, um, and when we've got these kids who've had recurrent illnesses, they've been on many rounds of antibiotics and the antibiotics kill the, you know, the not so good bacteria in the ears or the lungs or the sinuses, but it also, they kill the good, healthy bacteria in the gut. And when we get those imbalances in the bacteria in the gut, that also it creates inflammation and it slows that motility down that peristalsis. So we got to keep things moving through. And that's where getting those ball movements going and then adding in the supplements while we're upping the fiber foods, upping the fruits and vegetables, taking out the thing, right? The artificial dyes and colors and decreasing the dairy. Um, the overall, that combination is just, it's the beautiful concert that makes your balls move. Oh, I love that. The beautiful concert that makes your bowels move. By the way, all you adults who probably are 99% of our audience right now, have you settled for constipation? And therefore, are you just accepting it in your children? So this advice that uh, Dr. Kilbane has given us is perfect for children. And it also should resonate with the rest of us. Um, you know, she's a pediatrician and focuses there. But um, if you have accepted uh, Miralax isn't just a potential problem for children, okay? And then suddenly when you become 21, it's not a problem. So um, address this for yourself. It, Dr. Cobain, do you, uh, before we go, do you have a, you have your book you could hold up or at least tell us the name again? I have my book in the other room. I normally grab it and I forgot to. It's called Healthy Kids, Happy Moms, Seven Steps to Heal and Prevent Common Childhood Illnesses. And, and, and tell us your website, because I'm sure we can see it there. And like you say, you can get it there, get it from Amazon or, or anywhere books are sold. But yes, um, absolutely. So it's SheilaKilbane.com. It's my website, S-H-E-I-L-A-K-I-L-B-A-N-E. And we've got a, a book page where you can get a lot of free downloads. We have so many resources on the website. We have our blog and our Instagram, just Sheila Kilbane, MD, and Facebook. And we, you can join our newsletter and we, you know, we have a brick and mortar practice in Charlotte, North Carolina. We do see patients from all over. You just have to come 
one for one visit each calendar year in person. But otherwise there's, you know, there's a book and I have an online course and we have a mentorship program actually for other, for practitioners wanting to learn how to implement integrative and functional medicine into their practices. Well, that's good. And then, and there are probably some, um, I know a lot of nutritionists and I don't know how many of them are skilled with children. And so, you know, although most principles of good health are not necessarily, not specifically age related but of course how to apply it effectively and properly with kids is going to be different than adults and of course that's what you lay out in your book well you know thank you um i i think this is the kind of thing where parents are particularly befuddled and like you said here you are you're an md you're telling all your patients yeah just give them miralax as long as you want and then as you actually look into it yourself i think a lot of doctors might be a little shocked sometime if they looked into the actual research versus what they're told by their experts who are supposed to know. So I'm, I, I think that's great that you broke out of the mold a bit um, so that you could, um, you could not just give kids, isn't Miralax like food grade antifreeze kind of? It's, it's, it's just a couple of chemical bonds away from antifreeze from a, from a chemical standpoint. And the, the way that Miralax is, you know, was put through to be used as a pharmaceutical is that it doesn't get, it, it technically is not supposed to get absorbed into the GI tract, that it just stays in the GI tract, pulls water into your colon you know, has that osmotic effect and that's right. what can help you have the bowel movements. But what there was actually a big, the FDI gave, um, or the, the FDI, the FDA gave Johns Hopkins, uh, what was it? Or sorry, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, $350,000 grant to research the questions is, does it, um, how much does PEG, that's what it's called, might get absorbed by the intestines of the very young? And is it linked to the development of psychiatric problems in children? So oh, wow. there's there has been, there's been enough questions that the FDA started studying it. I cannot find the results of any of these studies, um, but I will keep looking. Well, I tell you, listen, everyone, I think the point is, and I'm not trying to pick on Miralax. I just know it's out there a lot. I hear people talk about it. But I think the point that Dr. Kilbane's really making here is we want that that beautiful concert of things to come together to promote health, not just bowel movements, but it just just as constipation can just spiral out into so many uh illness symptoms with your children it works exactly the opposite when you get things rolling it spirals out to a lot of benefits and um i really appreciate what you're doing Dr. Kilburn. Yeah, so beautifully said. yeah and so um again I, I want you to go to sheila kilbane and s-h-e-i-l-a-k-i-l-b-a-n-e dot mm -hmm. com and parents again um uh, this book is richly illustrated and it is, it's sort of easy to follow. It's, you don't have to read like a 300 page tome and wonder no. if you're going to remember it all. It's very step-by-step. Step. Here's the concept, but here's what we do. Here's how you implement it. And I haven't seen as many books like that. I think with children, it's important. So again, I want to, um, everybody go to humanizehealth.com. Check out all, uh, we have Dr. Kilbane on other podcasts there that you can look at, not just this one. We've had her on several times because she's such a good guest. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the program today. Thank you for having me.